So we're outside in the beautiful area of the Eastern Canadian Rockies. This is an area called Yamnuska. And Leanne's joined me this afternoon. Hi Leanne. Hello. And now we're going to talk about action photography. So Leanne, I believe you've been trying to get some photographs of your son Asher when he's been skiing and running. And what problems have you been having? They're blurry. They're blurry, okay. So a common problem, and it could be for two reasons. One is a slow shutter speed, and the other one is the autofocus. Okay. So let's look at the autofocus first, and you're using a Canon Rebel camera. Right. Well, the autofocus comes in two parts, essentially. One is um, what's called a servo mode. That determines whether you're going to focus on a subject that's moving or is still. So if you're mo focusing on a moving subject, then you want to have a mode on your camera called AI servo. So we'll change that first. Yep. So we just press the uh, AF button on the back and then you'll just choose AI Servo. Okay. Now I use a Nikon camera, so on my Nikon that would be a mode called AFC mode. So all Nikons for moving subjects would go to an AFC mode. Now the next thing with autofocus is where in the frame is it going to be focusing on? So you want to um, choose part of the area of the autofocus and make sure that it's focusing in the right part. Now, the Canon cameras have an excellent automatic area mode. So I think for our photography of shadow running around this afternoon, then we'll put it on auto area. Okay. Okay. So to do that is you just press this button on the top right hand side and then just turn the dial until you see all the points light up. Right. Great. So our model today is going to be my dog shadow. So we'll see her running around as we, as we progress. Now the next part of this is to use a fast shutter speed. With a slow shutter speed, then shadow is going to be blurry. Now with action, that can actually be quite attractive and we'll look at that later on this afternoon. But first of all, let's get some nice photographs of shadow running, but with a, a fast shutter speed so everything's nice and sharp. Okay. To do that, we could do it in either um, the TV mode, the time value or shutter priority mode, mm -hmm. and you could choose the shutter speed. So something, in this case, you're using a 55 millimeter lens and we're going to be quite close. So a shutter speed of around 125th of a second or faster than that will be nice and fast and we'll get lots of um, nice sharp pictures of a jumping, etc. Okay? Great. So Leanne, what do you think of those photographs that we just taken then? Awesome. Great, so that's, that's helped get the nice sharp pictures. Mm -hmm. Now what we want to do now is deliberately get some blur. And the reason for that is if we have nice fixed trees in our picture, and we have this blurry dog running past, then we get a sense of motion and speed in the photograph. So to do that, we want to put the camera on a tripod. So you've got your tripod on today, and we're going to have a slow shutter speed. Because the camera's on a tripod, the background will look nice and sharp, but with the slow shutter speed, as shadow runs past the shutter, there'll be quite a lot of blur there. Now to get the slow shutter speed, we can either use the AV or the aperture priority mode, choose a small aperture, and then the camera will give us a slow shutter speed. Alternatively, we could go to TV, which is time value or shutter priority mode, choose a slow shutter speed, and then the camera will give us a small aperture to achieve that. Okay. Okay. And where should I be focusing? That's a good question. Um, we want to kind of predict where shadow is going to be in the frame. So we can either put the autofocus area part onto where the shadow is going to be, or we can manually focus roughly where we think she's going to be running. And then hopefully okay. she'll run past that point. Okay. Okay, let's go. Sounds good. I've heard of something called panning. Okay. Can you explain that? Yeah, sure. Panning is the opposite effect to what we're going to do with the tripod. So with panning, we're going to follow the movement of shadow running and with a slow shutter speed, the background's going to end up looking very blurry or streaky. But shadow shouldn't look too streaky because we're actually following her with the camera. Okay. So in that one, she's going to look relatively stationary, but the background's going to look blurry. So we'll do both techniques and you get to see the difference. But before we do the panning, let me give you a few tips. With panning, you want to have a slow shutter speed about 1 30th of a second. 
and again we, the best mode to use that is TV mode. We can go to TV, select a 30th and we'll just make sure that we get a small aperture. The next thing is to, uh, no. the next thing once you've done that is to make sure when you're do it, doing the panning that you follow through. So if we're panning shadow like this and when you take the pictures continue to move the camera when you've taken your finger off the shutter release button. If you don't then you get kind of an interrupted look to the picture and it doesn't look quite right and that's a common mistake. So just follow through and then just keep moving the camera when you've taken your shutter your finger off the shutter release. Okay. Okay, let's go and try that. Let's do it. Now with the autofocus on AI servo, it's important to keep your finger half pressed on the shutter button. That will allow the camera to track the subject as it moves. So you don't have to take any photographs, but just keep looking through the viewfinder, keep your finger half pressed on the shutter button, and then just follow the subject, in this case shadow, as she runs past the picture. Now, when you want to take pictures, just gently squeeze down. It will take some photographs, and then but the autofocus will be tracking all the time. Okay. Now, as part of this, it's going to be easier if we set the camera's shutter release mode to continuous. That way, that when you press and hold the shutter release button down, then you'll get a series of photographs. You don't have to keep releasing your finger off the shutter release button. Okay. Great. So, Richard, I have this stabilizer on off button. Can you tell me a bit more about that? Yeah, sure. So the Canon lenses have a thing called image stabilization built into them. And that's an element in the lens, which is basically moving in the opposite direction to where the camera motion is. So when we're doing the panning, we want to turn that off because we don't want the element in the lens to be moving that way when we're panning the lens that way. Now, other Canon lenses have um, a mode switch, which is mode one or mode two. In mode one, the stabilizer is working both vertically and horizontally. In mode two, it works in just vertically. So when you're panning, you want it to go to mode two. That will allow us to do the pan, and then it will still stabilize the lens vertically. Okay. And for those of us with Nikons, then the, the equivalent is a system called vibration reduction. And with vibration reduction, uh, we have it has an active or a passive mode. So when you're panning, you'd go, go. When you're panning, you would go to the active mode, and then it just it does the same thing. It just does the uh, vertical vibration reduction. Okay. okay. Would there uh, be any other times that I would want to turn my stabilizer off? Yeah, there's a couple of other occasions on some cameras. Sorry, on some lenses. Um, you should turn the stabilizer off when you put the camera onto a tripod. Now that's not the same for all lenses with image stabilization or vibration reduction. You'll have to read the manual and it'll give you the advice as to what to do on a tripod. But if you're doing very long exposures on a tripod at night time, maybe to get star streaks, etc., then you definitely want to turn it off because the camera's going to be on the tripod for quite a long time and any wind or any slight motion that you can't detect may be detected by the lens and it's going to move the element back and then all of a sudden your great night of photographs is going to be blurry. Not because the camera moved but because the stabilization element moved in it. Okay. So those are the times when you want to turn the stabilizer off. Great. Okay. Thanks. So Richard, I have a telephoto lens and when I take pictures with it it's much blurrier than when I use this lens here. Okay. Why is that? That's probably because you're not using a fast enough shutter speed with that long lens. When you've got a long telephoto lens, say the 300mm that you've got, then you'll see that as you hold the lens you get quite a lot of shake. So you need to have a fast shutter speed. It's made worse by the fact that you've got this smaller sensor in your camera, so you've got this 1.6 magnification. So your 300mm lens is effectively a 480mm lens. So that's making the problem even worse. The general rule of thumb is to use a shutter speed that is close to the focal length of the lens. So that basically means that with a 300mm lens and the 1.6 magnification factor, you should be having a shutter speed of about 1 500th of a second, but only when you're hand holding it. However, the image stabilization in that lens is going to help you out. So a 1 250th or uh, even a 1 25th of a second will be, will be fine. 
but that's that's the reason if you use a long lens you need to have a faster to speed if you're going to hold it in your hand okay what does going to demonstrate now is he's going to zoom in on us and he's hand holding the camera so you'll actually see a lot more shake in the video than he will do when he zooms out okay so over to doug